In this unit, we are reviewing the skills necessary to be successful in AP Calculus. In this video, let's review verifying trig identities. Along the way, we may need our Pythagorean identities. So at the very least, memorize the three that are shown here in yellow. We may also need these double angle identities. So make sure you have these memorized as well. In order to verify a trig identity, you have to pick one side of the equation to work on and manipulate until it looks like the other side. You cannot work both sides of the equation. I usually pick the side that looks more complex, and certainly if one side has addition or subtraction, um, that's the side I pick. So I'm going to work on the left side until it looks like the right side. One thing I can do is rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. So, of course, tangent is the same as sine over cosine. And then cotangent is the same as cosine over sine. So another move I can make is to get like denominators and add these fractions together. So if I want like denominators, on the left side I'm going to multiply it by sine over sine. And on the right hand side I'm going to multiply it by cosine over cosine. Interesting. So this will give me sine squared Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and combine these into one at this point. So I've got sine squared plus cosine squared over the common denominator of sine x cosine x. Okay, um, I'm keeping an eye on what's going on over here. I don't really see it yet, but what is jumping out at me is that the numerator is sine squared plus cosine squared. That's the most famous Pythagorean identity. So we know sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So let's go ahead and get that going and see where it leads us. So now we have one over sine x cosine x. All right, well, this can be separated into um, 1 over sine x times 1 over cosine x. And we know that 1 over sine x is cosecant. And 1 over cosine is secant. And that's the same as what we were trying to match. Secant times cosecant. So I guess if I want it to be perfect, then I will switch these around and put secant, co whoops, cosecant. And then for the last step, I always go, like to go ahead and set them actually equal to each other. So we have now verified that identity. For problem B, both sides look equally complex, so it probably doesn't matter which side you work on. I'm going to work on the left side. When I see a sum or a difference in the numerator or denominator, one strategy I like to try is multiplying by the conjugate. So remember, if I have a plus bi, the conjugate would be a minus bi. The advantage of multiplying by the conjugate is this always works out as a squared minus b squared every single time. The middle term cancels out. So it just simplifies your work a lot. So if I were to multiply by the conjugate of this denominator, it would be 1 plus sine x. Of course, I would have to multiply by the same thing in the numerator so that I'm not really changing the value of the problem. I'm multiplying by one. So remember, when you multiply by the conjugate, it's really going to turn out to be um, a squared minus b squared. 
So like this is my a and my b right here. So a squared is going to be 1. And my b squared will be sine squared. So this will be the result of multiplying by the conjugate. Uh, I think I'm going to leave the numerator the way it is for now. I'm not going to change it. So I've got 1 plus sine x times cosine x. I'm really liking the fact that I've got 1 plus sine x right here, and looking at the target, there is a 1 plus sine x. So I feel like I'm heading in the right direction. But also, 1 minus sine squared is looking real familiar. Think about the uh, most famous Pythagorean identity, sine squared, uh, well maybe I should use x's, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. If I were to subtract sine squared from both sides, I would get cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared, which I see right here. 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So we can use the Pythagorean identity to replace 1 minus sine squared with cosine squared. So I will now have 1 plus sine x times cosine x over cosine squared. So of course, now I have a cosine in the numerator, and I have two cosines in the denominator. So uh, this cosine is going to cancel out one of the cosines in the denominator, and I think I can squeeze it in here. That will leave us with 1 plus sine x over a single cosine x. And that is the target. So we have now verified this identity. Let's do one more. I'm not sure which side to start with. I'm leaning towards working on the left side of the equation, but I see this double angle over here. So um, I hope you have these memorized. We're definitely going to need this one on the top. So remember that sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So as I manipulate the left side of the equation, I'm watching for 2 sine cosine to appear. So let's go ahead and set this up. Uh, if we have this binomial squared, then that means that we have sine x plus cosine x times sine x plus cosine x. Whatever you do, please don't think you can just square each term separately. We are going to have to foil this or double distribute however you want to think about it. Uh, I think of it as the distributive property. So I'm going to take this sine x and multiply it through. So that will give me sine squared x plus sine cosine. So I've distributed the first one. Now I'm going to distribute the cosine. So cosine times sine is going to give me sine x cosine x. And then, uh, of course, cosine times cosine gives me cosine squared. All right, remember what I told you. We are on the lookout for 2 sine cosine to appear. Well, looky what we have here. Sine cosine plus sine cosine. That makes 2 sine cosine. This is working out great. Okay, um, we also have sine squared plus cosine squared. I was debating going straight to a 1, but I think I will save that for a separate step. 
So just rearranging this a bit, uh, we have sine squared x plus cosine squared x. All right, that's just me putting these two terms next to each other. So now we can get the missing piece. We have the uh, 1 right here, and of course, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And then we have 2 sine cosine, which we know is sine of 2x. So we can go ahead and jump to the final answer. 1 plus sine of 2x. All right, at this point, I'd like to go ahead and write down the target that we were shooting for this whole time to finish it off. So equals 1 plus sine 2x. And we have verified the identity. 